is history repeating itself in Darfur? There have been alarming reports of ethnic violence in the Sudanese region since April, with the start of the brutal power struggle between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. Over nine months into the conflict, thousands have been killed. Nearly half of Sudan's 49 million people are in need of aid, and more than seven and a half million others have fled their homes, making Sudan the biggest displacement crisis in the world. For more on the situation there, our guest today is Aliona Sinenko, the regional spokesperson for the International Committee of the Red Cross. We join her in Nairobi by video. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Could you start by just painting a broad picture for us of the current situation in Sudan and what daily life is like for civilians in various parts of the country? The daily life is becoming more and more dire with every day of the conflict that is passing by. Even uh, the places they were considered relatively safe, that were used as safe havens by uh, tens of thousands of displaced people like Wad Madani, uh, they came under attack. And uh, our colleagues on the ground, they were describing horrific scenes of chaos and panic as uh, civilians were trying to flee en masse. And that, of course, led to more suffering, more displacement, more families separated. And now every single humanitarian indicator that we take and we look at is just painting more dire picture while the humanitarian agencies are struggling more and more to bring uh, life-saving aid supplies into the country. And can you describe what the Red Cross's operations are like in Sudan right now? Or are you and other aid organizations even able to function? We are able to function, but what we're able to do under the current circumstances is just a fraction uh, of what this massive humanitarian needs uh, we, the, uh, compared to the massive humanitarian needs that we are facing. Uh, what Madani that uh, our staff had to uh, had to abandon in uh, December, and that was this large humanitarian hub, like many for many humanitarian agencies. Uh, the, after the city came under attack, uh, it was now it became impossible for us to return to the capital. Um, Khartoum, where a humanitarian situation is extremely dire and where civilians are still being trapped. And there are more and more areas in Darfur where uh, the movement of our staff is incredibly difficult. So yes, we do have staff present in the country. We are working to deliver medical supplies, food and uh, improve access to clean water. But uh, the conditions for us to be able to operate are becoming more and more impossible. I do want to talk specifically about the situation in Darfur. There have been alarming reports of ethnic killings carried out by the rapid support forces. What else do you know about, about that and about the situation there? The situation in Darfur is extremely dire for the civilians. And uh, when I visited uh, the neighboring country, the neighboring areas uh, uh, close to, the, like in the border between Chad and Sudan, uh, the town of Adria, where many Sudanese civilians have fled, uh, people who are staying there, women and children, who are living now in dire situation, they painted a uh, horrific experience that says that they had to go through. They had to flee their houses in the middle of the night without shoes, without anything. They had lost sight of each other on the way. And now they're just uh, sitting in these camps in the border areas and uh, have no vision of the future. They don't know if they will be able to return to their homes. And even if they are able to return to their homes one day, everything they had, they've lost. And Darfur already saw horrific ethnic violence in the early 2000s. Do you get the sense that history is repeating itself? Indeed. And uh, the violence uh, that took place uh, in uh, early 2000s is something that people often bring up. It is still very much alive in the collective memory and uh, the trauma. Uh, that these people uh, have gone through uh, that time is now they are reliving it uh, again. What the difference is compared to the early 2000s is the amount of attention that this crisis is receiving. While uh, back in the day it was 
pretty much made the headlines. Unfortunately, now uh, with the state of the world, this uh, this massive, huge humanitarian crisis is just drowning uh, in other headlines and not getting a fraction of the media attention that it deserves. And in addition to media attention, as you said, there's so many crises in the world right now. Does the Red Cross have the resources that it needs to confront all of these different crises? Uh, the resources, uh, the lack of resources to fully respond to the uh, to this massive humanitarian needs um, is another huge obstacle uh, coming second after the lack of access uh, to the most affected areas and uh, the difficulty to operate in this very volatile uh, conflict environment. But yes, for us to be able to, uh, to bring sufficient supplies to the people who are fleeing to the neighboring countries, and all the neighboring countries that are receiving this massive influx of refugees like South Sudan, Chad, um, Ethiopia, they are all facing multiple challenges. Uh, and uh, our capacity to respond to these needs and the capacities of other organizations is very much hampered by the lack of resources as all these crises around the world are screaming for attention. And in early December, uh, one of your humanitarian convoys was attacked uh, in the capital, Khartoum. Uh, has anything been done to prevent further attacks? Do you maybe have any open lines of communication with the two sides? We are talking to the parties, and uh, for us, the priority is uh, to re-establish the vital humanitarian access, to re-establish the humanitarian space that we uh, need to be able to operate, uh, to be able to bring food, water, and uh, also to provide protection to desperate civilians who are still trapped in these areas in capital of Car in capital Khartoum and also in areas of Darfur. So yes, we are talking to the parties. Uh, for us, it was an incredible shock uh, what happened to, to our convoy what happened to our colleagues, but also that convoy was trying to reach civilians in need. And we should not forget the consequences, the dire consequences of such uh, incidents is that uh, they were not able to carry out this humanitarian operation that they were on the way to, to do. Well, we hope that you can get the access uh, and the help that your organization needs uh, to bring that much needed help to Sudan. Uh, thank you so much uh, for bringing thank to you. light this undiscussed uh, conflict uh, on our show today. Again, that was Aliona Sinenko, the regional spokesperson for the International Committee of the Red Cross, speaking to us there from Nairobi.